in this step of the process we're going to bring our high poly model that we made in Agisoft and our low poly model with UVs into ZBrush and we're going to reproject the high poly details onto the low poly model and so we're basically going to subdivide that low poly model and project all that high res detail onto it so we can actually put it on good UVs so we can make different maps and texture maps and normal maps and displacement maps to be able to drop this into uh, into a game engine or into a 3D package for rendering. So here's ZBrush. Um, we're just going to hit the comma key and make that little uh, light box disappear and we're going to go to tool and we're going to import our high res from Agisoft. So let's just find our high res. So that would be the scan box demo. And you can see that's a pretty good large size on that. And give it a, a second or two because again it's a big file. And then I'm going to go in the middle of the canvas, drag it out and then I'm gonna hit the T key so we can actually rotate around so if I just kinda of click off to the side of the model you don't have to press alt to rotate around it so here's our high poly and then we're gonna bring in our low poly but we're gonna do it within the subtool menu so we'll go to subtool and we're gonna go down to append and what are we gonna do is we're gonna put a placeholder object because you just can't bring another object in the ZBrush. Uh, what it'll do is just replace the first layer of the subtool and it makes it a little bit more awkward to work with. So we're just going to go to Append and we'll just pick the Sphere 3D and this will be our placeholder. We're going to make sure we select that subtool and then we'll go back to Import and then we'll do Scan Box Retopo and boom! lined up just perfect because uh, when we built the low res or retopologized mesh inside of Maya we didn't change its position we uh, the high res and the low res stayed in the same spot in 3d space and everything just lines up so it makes life a lot easier um, let's go down to the tool panel if I keep scrolling down here so I'm clicking off to the side here and scrolling we come down to UV map. I'm going to click on that. And it kind of jumps up. So sometimes you have to left mouse click hold and drag it down. And I'm just going to hit morph UV. And what that's going to do is just going to show us the UV map that we have on the low poly object. Make sure that got brought in and it's exactly what we want. Looks good. I'm going to click on morph UV again. And there you are. Now we don't want to make sure you don't click delete UV even though it's right next to it then you have to do the process all over again okay so now go back to subtool we want to make sure our high res mesh is all the eyeballs are turned on if we click on it it makes them it makes them disappear we want to make sure that is visible and then the object or the retopologized mesh is going to be the one we select. So I make sure I select that particular layer of the subtool. And what we're going to do is we're going to subdivide the low poly and reproject the high poly detail onto it. And we're going to do this at each subdivision. We're just not going to do it subdivide the low poly really high and then try to project it. Never really works out well that, well that way. We want to do it each sub subdivision up the chain or up the divisions and we get a much better result from doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to geometry and there's this divide button and that's going to divide the mesh each time. But if you can see if I hover over it there's a shortcut control D. So control D will do the uh, is the shortcut for that divide. So click it, it divided it and you can see now we have two subdivisions and now we go back to the subtool and within the subtool menu there is project and we're going to hit project all now sometimes you might have to play with the distance um, because sometimes the projection doesn't is not uh, 
big enough or it looks far enough in its search distance for the high res. So sometimes you have to play with this parameter. But for this object, default works fine. So again, you might have to play with this with your particular models. Okay, now we just hit project, and there you go. And now you can kind of see it's trying to follow along with the high res. Now we're going to hit control D again, and then hit project all again. And you can see it's starting to follow along. Hit control D again. Hit project all again. And now ZBrush is starting to lag. Now we're getting into higher polygons. So you're going to notice ZBrush lagging each time you go up in the subdivisions. That's just normal. Control D once, once more. And again, we want to do this seven times. Now ZBrush is all like, uh, okay, we're, we're, we're getting up there. And there he goes. Hit Control D one more time and project all. So this particular subdivision, I think this is subdivision six, is gonna take a little bit longer. So I'm gonna pause the video and then uh, I'll come back to it when it's done. We're back and let's go to geometry and I wanna check the subdivision so we're at six. We wanna go one more. So I'm going to hit control D one more time and then project all. And again, I'll stop the video because this will definitely take longer. I will warn you, um, ZBrush might seem like it's frozen. It's not. It's just really sitting there trying to calculate and you're just going to have to give it uh, some time. So I'll see you guys in a second or so. Now that it's done, let's check it. I'm going to turn off the high poly there. And looks like all that detail is transferred over. Looks pretty good to me. Now, the next step in this process. is to go in there and do a little cleanup. So you can see there's some striations in the texture of the model, anywhere that's mostly uh, smooth. So what you want to do to take care of that is to go down a few subdivisions on the reach projected geometry. So if I come over to geometry and I'll go like maybe sub. let's try subdivision 5 you can kinda see a little bit here and what you want to do is bust out your Wacom tablet and you want to be in the smooth mode and you want to drop the size of your brush to be roughly the same diameter of this section right in here hold shift and just tap. Don't run a stroke through it. That will just obliterate too much detail. You literally have to just sit here and hold shift and tap. So you're just getting rid of those striations. And you have to do this all over the model. And you just quickly kind of do that really as fast as you can, just tapping. It is a very tedious process, but anywhere it's rough, supposed to be smooth, and you start seeing those gradations, and those are just highlight gradations that show up from the scan process. So this is what you do to clean up scan data. Because you kind of have to come in here and just kind of clean that up. This is the probably the most tedious part of the job or the 
project and just come in here and don't worry it's not going to get rid of that detail that's on subdivision 7 that detail is going to still be there so I wouldn't really concern yourself about that resize it and then hold shift kind of clean that up So again, this is very tedious part of the process. So I'm going to go through here. Um, I'm doing it on subdivision 5. I can also do it on subdivision 6 too, to a certain degree. If I'm doing a big space like this. Um, get my brush to a pretty big level. I'm just kind of take some of that detail out. So just smooth it out. Don't go too nuts. Um, if you think you're you're going too much with the smooth by pressing shift, you can always drop the intensity up here at the top. Maybe drop it down to like 50% or 60% and just tap and clean up that mesh and then once that's all cleaned up you can set that back up to 7 and you can kinda notice that some of that digger, some of that striping will start to disappear I might have to do a little bit more but that's the kind of what you have to go and do a little bit is clean all this up. We don't and but again, do it, you know, subdivision 5 or 6 and clean that up the best you can. And again, tap. Don't do a stroke. You don't want to lose too much. All right, so I'll leave you guys to it. Kind of clean that up the best you can. And then once we've gotten that done, we'll uh, export the model out back into Agisoft and uh, get it uh, to get and reproject for the, the texture. All right, I'll see you guys in the next part.